Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. One activity that I think a lot of people have integrated into their lives during the coronavirus outbreak is the idea of sterilizing objects, things, whatever comes into your home, you want to sterilize it. There are a lot of different methods that people can use between soap and bleach. The ultraviolet light is one of the popular ones. Heat is another. And we're going to be talking about ultraviolet light today. It's one of pe uh, a lot of people's favorite methods of doing it because it's clean. You don't get everything all over your hands. Uh, you don't risk burning anything. It's kind of a nice, clean way of doing sterilization. But one of the big question marks around it is whether or not it actually works. There are a lot of products that have come to market that make really big claims, and I've been a little bit incredulous of some of the claims made by some of these products. So what I've done is I've gone out and I've gotten a UVC meter. Now, ultraviolet light comes in three flavors. There's UVA, B, and C. Uh, I had already had a UV A and B meter, and I went out and got a UV C meter, which is pretty pricey because I wanted to actually be able to test the claims of companies that are selling products to my family and your family, claiming that they're able to perform a certain task, and I don't want to trust my life to, you know, some company if I don't really know whether or not what they're saying is true. Carbon dioxide. They call it pollution. We call it life. Skepticism is great, but the second step after skepticism is actually testing and trying things out. And that's what I've been doing. I tested a variety of products uh, using my UVC meter, which uh, has its kind of sweet spot around 270 nanometers. And I'm going to share with you some of my findings. Additional to that, there have been claims going around that you can use banana uh, or banana peels for testing UV uh, light products to see whether they have the germicidal uh, uh, ability to kill uh, you know, viruses, I'm going to share my findings on whether or not that is true or untrue with you as well. So uh, first off, I want to tell you the products that I have been uh, testing. One of them, I'm going to show you right here, is one of these little sterilization wands. kind of folds out like this. There's an on-off button that recharges with UV, uh, I'm sorry, USB uh, power. This is another that recharges with USB power. It's just got five little LEDs in here. The one previous is also an LED uh, item. There have been a lot of LED lights coming out. LED is great because it's really low energy, but does it really actually do the job? It doesn't do you any good if it's a low energy item, if it's not actually performing the job for you. Uh, another item that I'm going to be doing, this is one that I had had since the beginning, was a shoe sterilizing light. I used to use these in my boots. I had them at the beginning of the pandemic. These are one of the early things that I started using to uh, sterilize things and I found out whether or not they actually work uh, during these experiments. Uh, the other item that I used, uh, I have been using is a UV sterilization box. I did testing on that so we're going to talk about whether that's effective or not. And finally I used the sun which is available to all of us for free. I did some tests on that to see how much UVC light is coming out of the sun at different times of day during different conditions. So let's start with uh, this one first and I apologize I'm going to be referring to notes that I have in this. Uh, this might work really well as just a narration, but honestly, I just, I got all dressed up and I just felt that I really needed to be seen on camera with this wonderful ensemble that I've assembled for myself here. So uh, I'm going to be reading a little bit. It might be a little non-profesh, but I want to get the numbers right. So uh, I did uh, several passes of testing uh, with each item. Uh, and I, I think the most important one is UVC light. Uh, I tested the UVA and B spectrum just to kind of see like what the kind of correlation was between how much UVC light comes out, how much UVA and B light comes out. Uh, and I also did a, the banana test for each of these. Let's start with this one first. This is a Stary Lumen, a uh, little illuminator. Again, like I said, it's got an on off button. It kind of flips open. You hold the on off here. And after a couple seconds, I don't know if I've even charged this thing. Might be dead on batteries. That was actually one issue with this thing. It doesn't hold the charge very long. Yeah, this one's already dead. But it has right here, there are 16 little LED lights on here. So uh, the, t the two tests that I did with UVC for each of the items was the uh, um, amount of radiation that you were getting at a um, one centimeter or less than one centimeter, really, really close, like the light right on top of it, and the amount of radiation that you were getting at three uh, three inches. So I did one centimeter and three inches. So I'm just, you know, it's American, it's European, it's world, you know, metric and all the different measurements. So I'm, I'm mixing it up here. Uh, so at 
uh, three inches, which I think is kind of like a normal sterilization distance if you're going to kind of go over an area or something. And that is what this thing is used for. The idea is you open it up, you're passing it over, and they, and they show in the literature, you're, you're kind of passing it over the arms of chairs if someone uh, sat there. They're talking about about three inches of distance as you're doing this, and just for a couple of minutes. The amount of radiation that I got was measured at 30, and I forget the unit. I'm going to put the unit down here so you can see the unit that I, we're talking about in this the whole time. The amount of radiation was 30 at three inches. Now, if you brought it down right on top of it and pretty much were touching it, that went up to 125. Uh, now, as comparison, we're going to uh, compare that to the sun. If you were to just put something out in the sun, and I apologize, I was not able to measure the sun's radiation at three inches and one centimeter. It was just, it was just too difficult to commute over there. I'm doing the sun's radiation all at one astronomical unit. One astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the sun, and I know that that changes through different times of the year. Maybe it's the average distance. I don't know. You know, give or take, one astronomical unit is the unit of distance that I'm using when I measure the sun. Now, uh, measuring the sun uh, at a you know, kind of mid-morning. I didn't do it during the peak of the day, you know, because you don't, you don't know if you're always going to have peak daylight. But uh, kind of mid-morning, sun kind of coming up, not morning, but not, not noon time. Uh, the radiation level that I was getting was about 20 at that time of day. So if you run this and you do it three inches away from whatever you're trying to sterilize, you get a reading of about 30. If you just put it out in the sun, which is free, you get a reading of 20. So the, this thing here is only 50% more effective than just leaving your thing out in the sun. And when the sun gets to midday, it's even more intense. Now, uh, on a cloudy day, I also also measured that. There, there is still UVC light coming down through the clouds on a cloudy day. And I was getting measurements of about two. So if, you, if you're in an environment that is really cloudy, you're going to get a lot more, 30 versus two. Uh, at uh, three inches uh, of distance with this. And again, if you really bring it down and you touch it, it's 125. Okay, the next thing I wanna uh, talk about is this other item here. Now this is another LED light, uh, and this one only has one, two, three, four, five, instead of the 16 of the other one. And the, the readings that you're getting off of this tiny little thing that you're supposed to use to like sterilize uh, elevator buttons and things like that, the readings that you get off of this at three inches is six. So this is only oof, like a quarter as effective as sunlight. So sunlight's free, it's bathing things all the time. If you have anything outside, there's absolutely no reason to bother with this because this is not as effective as just leaving it out in the sun. Uh, now, if you bring this really in and you get it less than uh, three centimeters away, you get a reading of 60, it's about 10 times more. Uh, but still, you know, compare that to 20, it's three times as much as just leaving it in the sun, but the sun's just baking things all day. So if you are thinking about getting any of these LED items, at least the ones that I've tested, at least as compared to sunlight, they are slightly more effective than sunlight, but way more expensive. They're not available to you all the time. They need to be recharged. Of course, the sun's not available to you all the time either. But sun, every day, you're getting hours and hours of that beating down on you. So these things, you know, you have to decide. They, they really are not that much more effective than just having something out in the sunlight. So if you have access to sun, I wouldn't really go crazy about these things. They are only slightly more uh, radiation being dumped out of these than the sun. Let's uh, jump over to these guys. These are the shoe sterilizers. Now, uh, these uh, are obviously not meant for sterilizing anything other than shoes. They're kind of nice. They slide right into shoes. But, you know, in a pinch, the bulbs here could be used, uh, you know, as a sterilizing uh, agent for all sorts of things. But let's talk about the numbers. How, how did these really hold up? And these actually held up really, really well. Of all the things that I tried, the bulbs in these, I, and I just measured, I didn't measure both of them, I just measured one bulb uh, in one of these. The bulbs in these were stronger in terms of UVC light than anything else that I tested, including the sun. Uh, the readings that I was getting at three inches were 200. That is 10 times more powerful than the sun. If you have these, the, one of these light bulbs three inches from an item, you're getting a reading of 200. Whereas with the sun at one astronomical unit away, you are only getting 20. So 10 times more powerful. Now, if you take these things and you set them right down on top of something, put them right down on top of that, the reading you're getting about uh, you know one centimeter away, a little less than one centimeter away is 2,000. So 
very, very powerful items. These are Stary Shoe things. By the way, all the items, even the ones that I'm not necessarily recommending, I'm putting links down in the products below, uh, in the description below. If you're interested in any of these products, uh, they're easy, easy links, so you can pick them up. Uh, these work really, really well. Now, they're not the most convenient item in the world because they're made for shoes and not everything that we want to sterilize is a shoe. So uh, I also was doing testing on a UV sterilization box is a convenient way of sterilizing things. You pop things in, it's kind of like a toaster, and they sterilize, there's a timer on it, and then even after the sterilization is complete, the ozone that is created from the UVC light uh, is a natural byproduct of the uh, um, the UVC light bombarding the O2 molecules, that's oxygen molecules within the chamber. It uh, bombards them, they all break apart, they recombine. Uh, many of them is ozone. The ozone is another further kind of destructive element on the viruses and it's also destructive on your lungs. You want to keep it in the box until the thing is turned off and the ozone being unstable naturally degrades back to O2 molecules. Uh, so. Uh, a, um, a UVC uh, sterilizing box is a really convenient way to go. And the measurements I was getting off of the bulbs in my sterilization box, and again, uh, links down in the description below if you want any of these things. Uh, at three inches, I was getting 830 uh, as the reading that uh, I was getting at about three inches away. Um, and the uh, reading that I was getting at about one centimeter away was 1500. Now that's a little bit weird because with these, I was uh, taking a reading about three inches away, and that was about uh, 200, and then, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, it was about 200, and then you get it really close, and it's 2,000. Now, with the box, the reading for having the item right up to it is only about 1,500, so it's less than these guys, but the uh, kind of ambient reading, three inches away, is 830, whereas with these guys, it was only 200. Now, why is that? Because, it, you know, it's still just one light bulb. Uh, the reason for it, I presume, is the fact that the light bulbs in the sterilization boxes are longer. There's more surface area putting out more light. There's also mirrors all around. So a lot of the light that uh, you, know, you wouldn't necessarily be capturing when you're right up close is getting wrapped all around your item. So the sterilization box overall, I think, is the most effective way of sterilizing things. You can get really big numbers. It's got the timers right on it. Uh, I've found it really convenient so far. And actually doing the testing with the numbers here makes me feel that it was an investment worth making. Incidentally, I also checked the uh, sterilization box with um, uh, mold spores. I took a petri dish. I did, you know, if you want to see this video where I do the test, there's a link to it up here. I did a petri dish, and after about 20 minutes, it was able to kill all the spores on the petri dish. So these sterilization boxes, they claim to work, and with testing, both through actual real life petri dish testing and with UVC meters, those sterilization boxes with their uh, special light bulbs in there that emit the UVC light and create the ozone, I think are the overall winner in terms of how uh, to conveniently sterilize things. These things here, they're gimmicky. Uh, they, you know, they're very low power, they're portable, they look suggestive like there are other things uh, but you know I I don't think that these things are the way to go I think that the old-fashioned stuff with the uh, fluorescent tubes inside they really throw off an awful lot more UVC light and while some people will claim that LED lights just can't technically even create UVC light that's not in my experimenting and my testing that is not true they can create UVC light just not very much of it. I hope that this was uh, helpful to you. I'm sorry it took you so long, uh, me so long to get this information out to you. It actually took a while to get the UVC meter in because when the coronavirus pandemic started, everyone wanted to get those meters and I had to wait in line like everyone else because at least in that one department, I was not prepped. That's it. Thanks for watching. Right, so I just finished editing the video and I realized I never got back to talking about those bananas. So let's talk about the bananas. Essentially what it is is that uh, on the internet there's this rumor going around that if you expose a banana's skin to the light from one of these devices, it will turn brown if the device is effective. Uh, I tested everything that I've talked about in this video using the banana skin test as well, and the, res uh, the results are really inconclusive. Uh, uh, some of the devices that uh, gave out more UVC light when tested had less of a reaction or no reaction on the ban uh, banana skin, specifically those two. Ugh got to fly here. Uh, specifically those two LED devices, the less powerful one uh, created a slight effect in the banana skin, whereas the more powerful one uh, didn't 
have any kind of a reaction in the skin at all. So I think there's a lot of variables there. Maybe the age of the banana might have something to do with it. The humidity may be in the air. I, I suspect maybe that the reason that the banana skins are turning brown isn't directly from the radiation, but maybe from the ozone that's created by the radiation. Uh, it, it's working on the skin, oxidizing the skin, and uh, you know, maybe under certain conditions that ozone transfers better to the banana skin under other conditions it transfers less maybe if there's a breeze the ozone kind of gets blown right away so overall i just found that the banana skin test did not seem to be a reliable way of determining the effectiveness of of a light bulb it didn't uh, the amount of reaction in the skin did not correlate very well with uh, you know the tested results that I was getting. So I would not use the banana skin myself. I think if you want to determine the effectiveness of a light, you know the information in this video hopefully could be helpful to you, or uh, you know looking up through other testing agencies. But the banana skin thing, nah, I didn't find that it was an effective way of correlating how much UVC light is actually coming out. I hope you find that helpful. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com.